So retinol is one of those products that ticks almost every box when it comes to anti-aging, fighting inflammatory and non-inflammatory acne, brightening up dull skin to make it look younger, and so much more. Retinol also exfoliates your skin and increases collagen production to reduce the appearance of fine lines and wrinkles, giving your skin a fresher and plump appearance that many of you are after. But what's awesome is that it also increases the production of natural chemicals like hyaluronic acid, which we know can keep the skin moist and plump. But what if everyone else is experiencing these benefits from it except you? Is there something you could possibly be doing wrong that makes it not work? In this video, we'll be going over five of the biggest mistakes when it comes to retinol and how each of these mistakes actually can make retinol work against your favor and how you can navigate around that. So definitely stay tuned till the end of the video. If you guys are new here, this channel is all about helping you make informed decisions as well as be in the know when it comes to your health and wellness. And I would love for you all to gently tap on that like button down below. And if you really like the content, then consider subscribing as well. Now, without further ado, let's get started. Before I begin with the first mistake, it's important to make sure you're using the right retinol for your face to begin with. And I can't stress that enough. You could follow everything else I tell you, but the big issue might be as simple as going too strong or too weak that can throw everything else off straight off the bat. What do I mean? If you have dry or sensitive skin, you want to start with a concentration of 0.3% and a popular and quite famous one being the rapid wrinkle repair that is fragrance free by Neutrogena. Then every three months, you can work your way slowly up to 1%. Another popular 0.3% is the Paula's Choice Retinol with Bacuchiol, as Bacuchiol is also said to work comparatively to retinol, but a lot milder. If you have normal skin, you can go ahead and start with 0.5% and work your way up to 1.5%. And a popular one is the ordinary 0.5% retinol with squalane to get that nice supple look. But if you have oily skin that is more robust, you can start with a 1% and work up to 1.5%. And the popular yet super effective one here being the Paula's Choice 1% with one of my favorite ingredients, licorice root extract. Since at that 1% mark, you will start to see some redness and that licorice will soothe that down as well as the irritation that comes with retinol. And the links for all that will be in the description box below. So definitely identify what skin type you have and check them out below this video. Now that we know what retinol to use for our skin type, let's start by avoiding the first mistake, which is using it during the day. Now, it's not a crime to use it in your morning routine, but you will become more sun sensitive, especially if you're not diligent with your sunscreen and reapplying it every two hours like you're supposed to, especially after sweating or swimming. Plus, overnight, your skin regenerates itself, so it's nice to give your skin the ingredients during this time in order to achieve better regeneration, well, technically. But if you're adamant on using it in the day, then I would increase the SPF, so if you're at 30, a bump up to 50 or higher would be the proactive move. The second mistake is only spot treating with it. Retinol is not for spot treatment. So those of you who have a retinol and get a pimple or two and want to dot retinol on it, it won't benefit you in doing it in that way. This is because retinol is intended to be used on the entire face. You want to invite the whole neighborhood to the party and not just your next door neighbors. Because don't you want those anti-aging benefits everywhere? The third mistake is overdoing it thinking that more of it means better results. You see, a lot of the mistakes can be avoided if you start out maybe two times a week for the first week and then every other night until your skin tolerates it. And remember, it's a pea-sized amount that we're talking about. Anything higher and your skin might be in jeopardy. And if you exfoliate, then try to space enough days before so you should skip your retinol product on the day before you exfoliate at the minimum because this can be way too harsh on the face. And let's say if you're getting lasers, microneedling, microdermabrasion, you will want to take a break from your retinol for a while 
until enough time has passed before you reintroduce it just to avoid damaging that skin barrier. The fourth mistake is mistaking normal skin reactions from retinol as intolerance or a breakout. Redness, flaking, irritation are all normal side effects of retinol. This doesn't mean you have an intolerance to retinol. All this means is that your skin is having a faster rate of cell turnover in which your skin needs that time to get used to the new speed limit. Then it will eventually subside. A good tip is if you want to experience less of this, especially if you have very sensitive skin, you could go ahead and use your retinol after your moisturizer. If you do so, then wait about 20 minutes to allow the moisturizer to set in before applying that retinol. And lastly, the fifth mistake is waffling. And no, this has nothing to do with egos, even though they sound pretty good right now. But what I mean is you can't make up your mind about staying consistent. We talked about one of the mistakes of overdoing it, but the mistake of underdoing it is also just as bad. Not being consistent means your skin never starts building up a tolerance, so you never start getting all of the great effects of your retinol. Think of it like working out, right? You'll never get stronger if you quit going to the gym every time your muscles get sore. And I know I already mentioned five mistakes, but I can't help but to add this last one in that I think many people will get wrong, which is expecting overnight results. I'll be real with you. No one wants to hear this, but most people only see the results at the three to six month mark, not the six week mark that you've been told. You may notice minor improvements throughout that time, but it's only at that six month mark where you could say whether or not it worked. This is because the effects have to take place in the deeper layers of the skin and the retinol has to be eventually converted to retinaldehyde, which then gets converted to retinoic acid, its active form for it to deliver the effects you're expecting. And all that takes time. Click the red subscribe button down below and I'll see you on the next one.